One of the vital functions of the United States government is to establish and maintain diplomatic relations with other countries. In every friendly and civilized nation in the world, there is an American embassy or legation. Whether it is Paris or Cairo, Shanghai or any other remote outpost, the most reliable and confidential means of communication is the courier service. Armed only with his passport, the courier, like a global postman, delivers the top secret dispatches of our government. Hospital. Now, man. Stephen McQuinn. Profession. Diplomatic courier. Sorry, but I just arrived from London. Oh, welcome. I'm one of the most experienced guides in Budapest. My name is Virgil Kish. But I say I can't speak Hungarian. <laughs> this is already English. I... Come again? Please unlock your suitcase. You must be a new boy. This is diplomatic baggage. In America, no? Please unlock your suitcase for customs inspection. Our laws apply even to Americans. If you'll just take a look at my courier letter, you'll find it all up to date, stamped and sealed. I don't want to look at anything but what you are concealing in your suitcase. Look, my plane was late and I'm in a hurry. I have diplomatic immunity. And there's nothing concealed in my suitcase but my underwear. We shall see. Since you refuse to surrender the key, I have no alternative but to force the lock. Well, that's a brand new suitcase. In Hungary, a smuggler is an enemy of the state. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kovács, gyere ide! Arrest this man! Well, Vigy just a, a nice Vigyétek a főhadiszállásra egy smuggler! Nem akarja kinyitni a kofferét! Tudjunk, hogy bánjuk el az olyan alakkal, mint ön. Ezek az amerikaiak azt hiszik, hogy mi bolondok vagyunk. Azt hiszik, hogy egy olyan alakkal, mint... Fogjat a négyes szellába kell zárni. Nem a négyesbe, hanem a kettesbe. Az én parancs, hogy a négyes szellába zárja. Pokolva a parancsol, a fogó oda megy, ahova én visszem. Ne ártas a szállt, ne felesen csinálj ott, amit mondok. Look, it's obvious you fellas can't get together on this, so let's forget the whole thing. Már a börtön kulcsokat egy szeretni szállt. Ne ártas a szállt, mert maga is a rács mögé kerül. Hát beszélni sem szabad. Jaj, ha a mama meghalom rá. I'm sorry if I'm intruding. Please, no. Stay a while. Well, if you insist. Hello, Father. My name's McQuinn. So long since I speak English, you must forgive. Father Maragni. Father, who did you take a swing at? You mean what are my crimes? Plotting against the government, conspiring with a foreign power, sabotage and anti-state activities, illegally harboring enemies of the people's democracy. That didn't leave you much time for saying mass, did it, Father? When is your trial? Not far off, no. I shall, of course, confess my guilt to all charges. You understand? Yes. Would you care for a cigarette, Father? Yes, I think I would. Mr. McQuinn, you are in this jail by mistake. You will not be here long. The American legation will see to that. 
Except for my jailers, you are the first person I have seen for 32 days. And there are friends, relatives. Would you like me to tell them how you are? So many things left undone. If you could take... A secret message? That's against all the rules, Father. Both Hungarian and American. A courier is not permitted to get involved with internal affairs. I'm sorry. Something non-political, just to say I'm all right. Oh, sure. There would have to be someone who speaks English. Next door to the St. Gellert Hotel, there is a barber shop. An old and trusted friend. His name is Petros. All right, Father. I'll tell him everything I can. I thank you. A barrel to eat kiss up what he told me. He says the American legation has arranged for your release. Well, it's about time. You keep the cigarettes, Father. Oh, no, no. It is not permitted. Forgive that I am slow. I was interrogated all night. Goodbye, Father. So sorry, so sorry. All right, so I shouldn't have antagonized him. Well, the fact remains you did. Well, the high-handed little punk called me a smuggler. He was going to force open my suitcase. And he shoved me. I'm familiar with all the details, Steve. Well, what would you have done? Use diplomacy? Yes. Oh, Bernie. Say, Bernie, do you know anything about a priest named Father Marani? Another Benzenti, yes. Why? Efficiency in the people's democracy is not what it's advertised to be. They stuck me in the same cell with Marani. Have they broken him down yet? Not quite. Um, I suppose there's nothing that can be done. We were lucky to get you out. Moranya knew what he was doing. He was warned, but he kept right on. Well, they charged him with everything in the book. Interfering with state affairs, helping non-communists to escape from the country. And when a group of students staged a demonstration and the security police decided to arrest them, Moranya hid them out. Now he won't tell where they are. A real criminal type. In Hungary, yes. See, the little brush you had with the customs inspection is one thing. You had some justification. Oh, thank you. But interfering in Hungarian politics is something entirely different. Here, sign this. Your rover boy ideas about helping the students will only land you back in Stalin's 60. I never heard of those students before this minute. Then what message does Marani whisper to you in the cell? Steve, Steve, that man's been in that cell for over a month. No one is allowed to communicate with him. He can't have any visitors. Of course he gave you a message, and don't think the security police don't know it, too. I let him tell me the non-political state of his health and nothing more. I'm sorry if the security police had disappointed in me. If I'd known the whole story, I think I'd have listened. Uh, you'd be glad that you didn't. I told him all I could do was let his friends know how he is. There's not much point in that, is there? No, I guess not. Now, what you need is a glass of barrack and a good Hungarian dinner. No, I think I'd better get a shave first. Get some get some Petros. Yes? I have a message for you. Who sent the message? Father Morani. That cannot be. Father is in jail. Well, so was I. I spent an hour in the same cell with him. I do not believe this. It is a kind of trick. Do you know his handwriting? Yes. Well, I can show you the message. You're supposed to pass it on to some girl. Please, you must not tell me. Times have changed. I cannot help you. Her name is Gisela. I know no one by that name. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Please, do not come here again. Look, if you could just tell me where I can find Gisela, I'll take her the message myself. But I don't even know her last name. My friend, if you have any message from Father Marani, destroy it. Erase it from your memory. If you are wise, you will leave Budapest before dark. Well, thanks for the advice.
take it easy. Take it easy down there. Hey, 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 you are behaving without charm. May I apologize for Hadi? She isn't herself. She's never been so impetuous. I'm so sorry. Oh, shame on you. See, she's blushing. Uh, maybe she doesn't like foreigners. Oh, Hadi, no. She's a true international. She doesn't recognize neither East nor West. <laughs> <laughs> you are a stranger in Budapest. May we be at your service? Sightseeing. I am one of the most experienced guides in Budapest. Here is my card. My name is Virgil Kish. Uh, guide, sightseeing, black market. No. Would you like to exchange your dollars for what they are really worth? Or maybe you are a patron of the arts, museums, historic sites. No, nothing, I'm afraid. No, but you are lonely. It's like a charming companion. I know a countess. She is the most beautiful. No, no, thank you. Say, wait a minute. Maybe you've got something there. Um, Suppose we discuss it in my hotel. It's less public. It's your service. So what I really need is a private detective. A private detective? This is the most fabulous coincidence. Look, I am one of the best private detectives in Budapest. <laughs> Thank you. Now let us examine the problem. You wish to locate someone. A young lady whose name you do not know. You have a message for her. But this is a big city. And one is a stranger. And one never knows when he'll bump into the secret police. Or a stool pigeon. I spit on your suspicions. Please. Not one foreign have I ever received from the police. You're a very well informed little man. Because I have ears that can hear a whisper from one barber chair to another. Does that make me an informer? Because I can see that you have been arrested for humiliating a custom inspector. Am I to be insulted? I uh, assume you have a proposition. Yes. Well, let us agree first <laughs> that you are in somewhat precarious uh, position. You cannot go out and search for the young lady because the secret police would know in 10 minutes about your activities, right? On the other hand, you suffer from that very typical American disease, conscience that doesn't let you to ignore the matter. Therefore, you have no alternative but place yourself in my very capable hands. Hmm. Hello? This is Petrush, the barber. Listen very carefully. Go to the club, do nine, two hours. I cannot do more. There's one alternative you overlooked, Virgil. I can put my conscience on ice until I leave Budapest. Let's just call this a little mistake. You'll find the knob right on the door. Use it. It'll be a long night, Mr. McQueen. We hope you live through it, huh? Good night. At first, it's the Hiva turtle. First, we'll decide what wines you have, and then we'll oh, choose the food to monsieur, go with. Oh, Monsieur, but a terrible error has been committed. This table is reserved, you understand? No. The most important customer. He always has this table at this time. Perhaps if you wait in the bar. Well, what for? In another few minutes, another table will be available. But I won't be here long. But, Monsieur, he's already here, waiting. Well, one of us will have to. I was here first, so please just take my order. <laughs> you go on, Laszlo. There's no need to excite yourself. The gentleman is entirely correct. He was here first. Elmer, I shall retire to the bar. Well, I'm sorry, Please. but... Please! I am the one to apologize. I should never have scolded Laszlo. But when I am hungry, I am a little irritable. Well, I haven't had dinner yet either. No! Well, then you must join me. That's the only civilized solution. Pinter, there you are alone. You were not expecting someone? Well, as a matter of fact, I... Oh, want... then you have already used the telephone. No, you do not understand. The telephones of the Club Duna are known far and wide. Well, I'm a stranger in town. Then permit me to explain. But first, you must understand that we Hungarians are romantic people. You have observed that at every table there is a telephone and a number. Voila. 
you sit alone, but you would like a lovely lady to join you. So, you look around, you observe someone similarly alone, and... Uh... <laughs> It's a great system, I like it. And it works both ways. It's your table. And it's probably a wrong number anyway. Hello? You must be very careful. The gentleman you're sitting with is Colonel Zaratov from the Hungarian Security Police. Well, how nice. Uh, why don't you give me your number? I'll call you later. Well, please do. I should have asked her if she had a sister. Not at all. I should never have sat down. It's unforgivable. I should go away and perhaps she will call again. Well, if I can wait till after dinner. Please, my friend. And the cup duna. One never makes a lady wait. There are too many telephones. <laughs> I shall go to the bar and drink to a successful meeting. Well, it's perfectly all right. Please, I insist. I told you, we Hungarians are romantic people. Well, if you insist. Yes? Quickly, Mr. McQueen. Give me Father Marani's message. There are a couple of addresses. I expect the most important. First, you go to a wine shop at 416 Kolocha Street. The people at that address are supposed to go to the village of Rishk in the Bakoni Forest. Now, that's the gist of it. Is that enough? Quite enough. And thank you, Mr. McQueen. You cooperated beautifully right from the beginning. But who then an American could be counted upon to resist an enforced custom inspection? My dear McQueen, name calling is so uncivilized. Goodbye, Mr. McQueen. Just a minute, McQueen. You may casually light a cigarette. Perhaps even two. I'm afraid, Mrs. McQueen, I am too late. If you gave your message to a young lady, she was the wrong one. Yeah, I know. Thank you. A sucker play from start to finish. Even that customs inspector was a ringer. Yes, they are clever. Very clever, that secret police. Yeah, but sometimes I get carried away. Now, putting me in Marani's cell, that was a real production. Then I got sloppy. That phone call from Petros. I didn't even tell him my name or where I lived. That should have planted suspicions, Mr. McQuinn. Yeah. And then when they gave me the table that's always reserved for Colonel Saratov at the secret police, a whole crop sprouted. You mean to say that the message you delivered Father Moran, you would never have recognized it. <laughs> How droll. May I say that you delight us, Mr. Pequeen? Yes, Mr. Keish. I guess I'll have to do business with you after all. You see, there isn't anyone else. Mm. And in about an hour, it'll occur to Colonel Saratov that he has the wrong address. In less than an hour, I can find Gisela Havashi for you. Uh, you work fast. How did you find out her name? Gisela from you and Havashi from Petro as the barber. Petros? He decoyed me to the Club Duna. No, I'd say that 60 Stalin did it for him. Oh, he's an honorable man. He didn't reveal the name of Gisela to the police. Now, uh, Mr. McQueen, shall we agree for the sum of 1,000 American dollars? I shall deliver your message to Gisela Havashi. Uh -uh. You'll take me to her and I'll deliver the message for 20 bucks. 20 bucks? <laughs> that's ridiculous. All right, 25, and that's all the money I have this side of Paris. 25? Uh, 25, plus your ruby cufflinks. Okay, and they'll match that tie class you stole from my room. What? You call me a thief? I spit on your paltry tie clasp. I am an honorable man. You can have it back any time. No, 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 keep it, keep it. Let's call on Gazella before it's too late. All right, but that would be dangerous. I shall arrange a meeting for you. I shall call you. If you go back to your hotel, I'll call you around before 10 o'clock. Well, if it's any later than that, one of Saratov's men will answer. How do you want your pay now? Oh, Mr. McQueen, I am not a tradesman. I trust you since uh, you trusted me. However, if you happen to have a cigarette, I... 
Here, keep them. Thank you. You kept me waiting. No more masquerade, eh? Right out in the open. You know, you look better in your uniform. What more do you want? Oh, just the same thing. Your stupid trick failed, McQuinn. We know within five minutes you have given us the wrong addresses. Really? And I had such high hopes of sending you to the farthest outskirts of Pest. You'll get nothing from me. No? Then perhaps your friend Virgil Kish will oblige us. Oh, yes, McQuinn. We have him under civilians, too. <laughs> what amateurs you Americans are. He'll soon lead us to the people we want. hint of warning to Kish and I shall shoot you through the head. I don't think you are prepared to die for a few students you have never even seen. Hello? Hello, Steve. Bernie here. I just thought I'd do a little checking. I'm glad to know you're not doing anything foolish. Where are you? I'm in my room, even before curfew. You now, it's after lights out that I'm worried about. You know me, Bernie. I do indeed. Do you mind if I come over and see you for a few minutes? I certainly would mind. When I require a babysitter, you'll know about it. Now stay away from here, Bernie. Well, that's just what I suspected. I'll be over in 20 minutes. I told him not to come. In 20 minutes. Very well. We shall see. Look, how much longer does this go on? I'll get out before your attaché arrives. Oh, stick around. Bernie just love to talk diplomatic relations with you. Are you getting nervous, McQuinn? No, just sick, comrade. Sick to my stomach from just looking at you. I smoke too. Matches. Hello? Everything is arranged. You have a rendezvous with a young lady at midnight. But where? The police are breathing down our necks. I know. Colonel Sarato will be in disfavor with his superior officers. You see, I have drawn the pursuit far, far away from the meeting place I arranged, which happens to be the Club Duna. How droll. May I say that you delight us? Well, she'll have something that you will recognize. The girl gift from you to me. The ruby tie clasp. Listen, 
I'm talking for a telephone booth just at the back of your hotel. Sarah, I spit on the secret police. Bernie. Who are you expecting? Bernie, I'm glad you came. In fact, I'm going to buy you a drink. Have you any idea what time it is? Nobody goes out this time of night. Only little dogs and fools. You better come along with me, Bernie. The way I feel, I'm apt to get into a lot of trouble. Uh -oh. Lost this. Looks like one of yours, Steve. Why, yes, thank you very much. Will you have a drink? Thank you. It's quite late. I'll have a cigarette. Here, keep the pack. Oh, yes. Here are some matches, too. Thank you. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Good heavens, all that over a pack of cigarettes. I must try it myself someday. Oh, uh, both are not. Say, tell me, Bernie, what happens to a police official in this country when he fouls up an assignment? He draws a slight suspension in Siberia. Well, what do you know? Hello, Colonel Saratov. Goodbye, Colonel Saratov. And don't forget your woolies. Ha, 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 ha. 